Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name is Mark, and this is a development update for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And let's start with what for me was the most significant announcement. Changes are being made to the way the Sim manages its memory allocations, and it's coming in Sim Update 15. Seb, the CEO of Asobo, announced it's already in Microsoft 2024, and it'll be reverse engineered back into Microsoft 2020 for Sim Update 15, 12th of March. In my opinion, the core architectural changes with improved memory management are at the heart of the new SIM, and I suspect driven primarily by the need to improve memory management for those on Xbox. But this is welcome news for all users, and especially those with a load on their systems such as VR pilots. And what's the significance of this? In a nutshell, efficiency. It's beyond the scope of this video to dive into all the different types and methods of memory that the computer utilizes, but the allocation and use of memory will be improved, and whilst this may not provide a massive FPS boost, what it will do, and this is significant, it'll go a long way to eliminating or reducing the number of stutters, judders, micro-pauses experienced within the sim. Seb reported that some of the improvements had been 100 to 200 times better. This will be most evident for those on lower-end systems, using VR or multi-monitors. And there was more regarding potential uplift in performance. Firstly, a quick word from this video sponsor. The most expensive component in your VR headset are your lenses. Protect your lenses and your eyes with lens inserts. VR Wave can make lenses to your prescription, or maybe you don't wear glasses but want to protect your lenses. Then look to get blue light and anti-glare filter. This will reduce stress on your eyes, Reduce the chance of motion sickness means you can stay longer in VR. VR Wave produce lenses for most VR headsets. Link in the notes below. Another announcement that could have a big impact on performance. And once again, coming to some update 15, and again linked to memory management, is reducing the load that glass cockpit updates have on the sim. If you're flying the 787 or the 747 that has 17 instruments, for example, this can have a very big hit on overall performance. These improvements will be brought to us by those amazing guys at Working Title. When the SIM was first launched, cockpit gauges updated every cycle. This changed with SIM Update 5 to reduce the load on the system. And in SIM Update 15, updates will happen on a more frequent basis but utilizing idle frames. This should provide a smoother experience, far less spikes, and potential judders and stutters, as the time spent per frame is drastically reduced. And this one could certainly boost your FPS. In response to one of the questions submitted for coverage during the dev update was the subject of ATC traffic and their somewhat renowned erratic behavior. Marcel advised that with Sim Update 15, more accurate and different data will be ingested into the Sim and on top of that, and again from the guys at Working Title, in a bid to improve immersion, they are working on a closer model matching fit. They're developing a new logic so that if the sim can't ascertain the aircraft or the airline, it'll try and match to the closest that it can find. And if the livery is unknown, it will try and match to something regionally correct. Model matching within multiplayer is still something that really has not been looked at. Seb also provided an update that the problems with ATC voiceover are currently under test and the fix implemented once again in Sim Update 15, subject to confirmation. We got a short update on the Inibuilds A320 that is coming free of charge to the Sim. They're currently still working on it and they're not sure it's going to make it in time for Sim Update 15, but that currently is the target date, but they're not there yet. Further update will be forthcoming at the next dev update in the beginning of March. As reported on at the last meeting, work continues on simulating helicopters and now those with multi-rotor. Currently limited to two, this should soon be available to developers and will open the doors for different types of helicopters as well as more accurate modeling. Don't know about you, but I can see a Chinook in our future. Another very significant announcement, in my opinion, was the introduction of the G3X Touch. This instrument is widely used in the real world, and in essence, it's a highly configurable navigational aid. 
You can do internal VFR flight planning within the instrument, and if linked to a GNS or GTN navigational system, well, your options are almost limitless. This development will also open up a whole range of different options for developers. And as you can see from the various slides and options presented, there's very little you can't do. This will be available from Sim Update 15 once again, and by default will be incorporated into a number of the default aircraft, namely the VL3, X Cub, and NX Cub. I'm looking forward to that, and I can see myself dragging that one to my 10.6 inch touchscreen. And who do you think's developing it? Yep, you'd be right, it's working title again. In other news, those using the X Cloud, that is where you stream it directly to your mobile device. This now has new functionality with touch gyro controls coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator on xCloud in the very near future. And you may be surprised, there's something in the region of 250,000 people using it on xCloud on a monthly basis. There was considerable amount of discussion regarding snow coverage within the sim with particular emphasis on frozen lakes, and that very often in the sim, lakes are depicted as frozen, when in reality they rarely are. Seb confirmed they're making changes to the model, so that lakes will not appear frozen in less snow depths at 27 centimeters or more, which is the parameter within the sim that governs whether a lake is frozen or not. There was some discussion on the future use and expectations in terms of AI and the incorporation of such technology into the sim. The Sobo confirmed they were looking at various aspects, although no real hard and fast examples were given. But ATC seemed to be a likely candidate for the future. However, York confirmed that Bing were using it to remove baked-in shadows and similar anomalies from aerial data. And hopefully in the future this will give us a cleaner and more accurate representation of the world around us. And hopefully these tools will help with water masking, something still needing a fair amount of work within the sim. There was a brief update on the World Hub which is currently under Alpha. They received applications more than they expected, some 1,208. And the initial round of testing is currently underway with further invites to be sent out in the near future. For those of you not familiar with what the World Hub is, it's essentially freeway from third-party developers. York shared the roadmap for 2024 for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So we have a number of city updates and three more world updates to come, a further two sim updates, as well as a variety of local legend and famous flyer aircraft. The June aircraft is pending release of the film, which should be in the not-too-distant future. I had expected there to be mention of Microsoft 2024 and perhaps a few more details to tease us with, but unfortunately it wasn't covered at all. Other subjects as well as a number of questions were answered during the development update. If you want more details, check out the link in the notes below the video. As always, thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, look after yourselves. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, helps the channel, and ciao for now.